that. Do, 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 do. I guess it is true that I guess I could have just changed the uh, category on Twitch. But uh, it might be better this way from a organizational standpoint because I can update the category. Oh, go get my controller. Here it is. I saw I did have two people watching Hearthstone stream. So, for people in that audience that would like to continue on to watch Phoenix Wright, I guess it would have made sense just to change my category, but yeah. Let's get this party started. So far I've been having a blast with this game. I mean I might do the entire series here between Twitch and YouTube. Maybe. There are three series total. As you can see it's a trilogy. We're on episode four now. Turnabout goodbyes day two technically trial or the first trial. And yeah, I've been really enjoying the series. The uh, gameplay is good. Sometimes it wrecks my brain a lot, but I do enjoy puzzles. And I think what I really enjoy about this game so far are the puzzles. Uh, uh, not, not just the puzzles, but the characters. I mean, seeing like Phoenix Wright and uh, Maya gumshoe edgeworth like all these characters just really stand out i just really like that about the game and of course the music is phenomenal like you all can hear it too it's really great stuff so i'm excited to be sharing this series with you thank you for watching let's get to it turn about goodbye Day two trial. Let's see what we discover in this episode. Day 26, 9.44 a.m. So, as I recall, this crime occurred on Christmas Day. District Court Defendant Lobby number two. We found Larry Butts in a Santa costume. And we had another character, what was her name? Lada. I think it was Lada. Karma? That's right, Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. I will do what we can to defend you, Edward, buddy. You came to a rescue and turned out samurai. We're here to return the favor. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. Whoa. That's actually pretty dang impressive. He must have connections better than Edgeworth, if that's the case. He's a god of prosecution, right? A god. And man, Edgeworth was a shooting star. Like, he fell so fast. Like, in, and one day he's like an incredibly successful attorney. Young, charismatic prosecutor. And the next day he's like, wanted for murder. Not a single case? Hell do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. <clears throat> hmm, sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. I mean, hell really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. I think Phoenix should give Edgeworth a little bit of credit because he did really help him get the uh, right person 
during the Turnabout Samurai's episode, so... He's not always about just proving who's guilty. Sometimes he is more preoccupied with ensuring that justice is served, much like Phoenix. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what I really what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. This guy means business, right? Ugh. So, so he was your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth. Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep. Oh wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years! He's as ruthless as me, times 20. Wait, wait a second. First you said it was times 10, now you're saying it's times 20? Make up your mind, Edgy. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. Prosecutors. I guess that's something like me was to me. Yeah, Mia was pretty great. It's a shame she died so soon in the series. <laughs> Speaking of Mia... Um, uh, Maya? Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry. I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what a bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Is he trying to keep it under wraps? Does he not want Edgeworth to know that Maya can channel Mia? That Maya can channel Mia? I guess not. December 26, 10 o'clock a.m. District Court Room Number 3. Oh, wow. This this dude looks like... Uh, man, who does he look like? Like a Halloween character or something. He looks like uh, one of the Adams Family or something. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. He looks like a bad guy out of, like, uh, Advanced Wars or something. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, wow. Karma. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? He's also got one of those... neck pieces that Edgeworth wears straight, straight out of the... 1700s. <laughs> Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? Right. My apologies. He's even got the judge scared. <laughs> Very well. Your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, or nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? In the courtroom, apparently. How am I supposed to fight against this? I called the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident. Now. Yes, sir. Dang. Dude got gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late the Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now there happened to be a woman camping there on the edge of the lake. At 12.10 a.m. she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. He went towards the boat rental shop. And then Raichu hit him with a thunderbolt. 
Hmm. Overhead map added to core record. Overhead map. Overhead map of Gore Lake. You testified to the court about the arrest. Now. Sheesh. Wait. Mr. Von Karma. Yes. Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Dang. Yes, of course. You're quite right. No, he's not. <laughs> this old dude ain't messing around. I'm trying to give him the voice of, like, Van Martin Van Buren or something like that. Like, uh... Some, some old dude in the White House kind of thing. Yeah, this is the arrest of Edward. The man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. Of course, Gumshoe is Lieutenant Surge. So I gotta try to do that the best I can. Okay, let's check my evidence too. I have Lada's camera set to automatically take a picture when a loud noise is detected. Faces the lake. Robert's autopsy report. Sometime on the 24th or 25th, Taz is one bullet shot to the heart. Lake photo taken automatically on 1225 at 12.15 a.m. I believe Robert is... Let's take a look at this. He's the victim. He's the defense attorney in the DL6 incident. We also have Gregory Edgeworth, deceased. He was the victim in the DL6 incident 15 years ago, a defense attorney, Miles' father. Miles Edgeworth is a gifted prosecutor and the defendant in this case. Gumshoe is in charge of the initial investigation, detective to local precinct. Lotta Hart claims to be a research student. She's camped out to photograph shooting stars. Larry Butts is a friend and former classmate, also my first client, often the first cause of trouble. Marvin Grosberg, 64 years old, he's a veteran defense attorney and Mia's mentor. Misty Fay is me and Maya's mother and spirit medium. She disappeared after the DL6 incident. She caught a lot of heat for uh, not finding out who is guilty in the DL6 incident. Uh, I believe Robert Hammond was successful in proving the innocence of his client. Manfred Von Karma, 65. He's a veteran prosecutor who hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. Edgeworth's mentor. Wow. I wonder why it changed. Like, why did Edgeworth's mentor change from his dad to Manfred? I mean, I don't know yet. An old photograph. DL6 incident. Exhibit A is written on the back. Misty Faye's photo. Gordy article. Article about a monster sighted at Gordy Lake. Overhead map of Gord Lake. We might be able to present this Gordy article to cast a doubt on the quality and authenticity of this lake photo. A man called into the station about 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now. The judges... Not talking. The rest of Edgeworth. Okay, let's try to press him. It seems like he's being vague and ambiguous, so we might be able to use that to our advantage. A man called in the station around 30 minutes after midnight. You received a call from a man? <clears throat> uh, yep. But you said there was a woman camping there. 
She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? <laughs> Objection. That woman and the man called and reported two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Irk. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who is camping. The woman who is camping, a lot of heart. What happened next, detective? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. How long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Oh, well, I'd say it was about three minutes. Wow, quick response time. That's, yeah, that's pretty fast. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Objection. Detective. You will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. So much to look forward to these days. This is no time for dejected daydreaming. Continue. Yes, sir. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Hold it. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Objection. He just keeps on objecting. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Not thinking, not feeling. Just facts. Yes, sir. Man, he's got his share of objective. Yeah, exactly. He just keeps on objecting. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. Hold it! Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutors. Okay, how are you going to object this time, Karma? Detective, the court isn't interested in your musings. Deep, trusting, poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments come from an active detective on the force. Damn, this, this guy means business. Oof. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue, now. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. Pistol bullet added to the court record. Found in the victim's body, fired from a 22 caliber pistol. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hold it. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the bowl. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe. That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. Sorry, Rob. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. Hold it. What about the pistol made it... Decisive evidence. Tisk tisk tisk. Ah, he has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. Uh oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. That's gonna be hard to counter or refute. Order, order. So Mr. Edwards' fingerprints were found on the murder weapon? Yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Accepted into evidence. Pistol, the murder weapon, 22 caliber, fired three times. Fair prints from Edwards' right hand. <laughs> Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. 
detective. Yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes, the ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Tisk, very well, I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. I'm far too busy, far too important. Uh, me? Ahem, ahem. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. It's like a, uh, what you call? <sighs> a blue... It's like kind of like a blueprint and kind of like a uh, history of the bullet's origin. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. Order. Order. This is bad. Yeah, you, you said it, Phoenix. This makes it look like Edgeward did it. Well, Judge, I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However... You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge. Yes? What are you doing? A ten minute recess. No! But wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. I'm... 80 years old, I don't have time for this. How old is how old is it here? Really? 65. I'm 65 years old, dang it. I've got one foot in the grave, now move it. Yes. <laughs> uh, this court will take a 10 minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? This prosecutor? Or the, the actual judge? What the heck? December 26th, 11.09 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. What are we supposed to do? Uh, hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the time that he had shot himself. Is that possible? Is it possible he could have been shot by Vada Hart, for that matter, from the embankment? You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Look at the bullet wound on the body to determine if it was a suicide. Certain bullet trajectories can only be accomplished from shooting yourself. Say, Maya. Huh? What? Any progress with Mia? Oh. Sorry. It's no good. We really could use your help. Ugh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? 
Well, you could offer distracting commentary to throw karma off the trail, that's for sure. Ask pedantic and mundane questions, Maya. You will confuse the sensibilities of karma and send him into a fit of confusion. That That is the key to victory here. <laughs> If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? <laughs> yeah, you're useless. Or no, I need you here. I'm gonna say I need her here. She might distract Karma or something. No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. What good am I? Oh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? Whoa, right. Don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh? Oh, sorry. Whoops. You've got quite a, a mountain to climb, Edgeworth. Edgy. Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Here we go. Sandy Cheeks. <laughs> Sandy Cheeks. In the flesh. Lot of heart. You're a research student at a university. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Dang, she looks like she's already tearing him. <laughs> Y'all need to learn some maps. Not so fast. Understand? Yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand my foot up your backside, Karma. <laughs> Very well. Your testimony, please. Yeehaw! <laughs> it was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. Heard this bang come up from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't nary a thing on the lake but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo. Except it is evidence. Now! Well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Order! I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. I need to raise other possibilities. Order, order, order. I will have order, I say. Well, Judge, the evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Objection! Objection. Wait, Your Honor. I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words, and they all read guilty. <laughs> you lose. Or, do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. 
If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you in held contempt of court. Ha 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 Nick, contempt? Contempt of court, you know? I guess I understand. Well, what are you going to do? Sounds bad. <laughs> do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? I think there was or I think there was it. I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Very well. I pray for your sake this isn't a waste of time. Stakes are high. A little high. That's all. This is the witness's account. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. I looked out on the window. I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't near anything on the lake but that boat. There weren't any contradictions in there. Sorry, Nick. If only my sister were here. Maya's really taking this hard. The question is, were there more than one bullet wound on the body? That's the million dollar question. There were two shots. It's like the JFK assassination all over again. It's like there were two shots. So was it possible that he shot himself once or twice for that matter? I think I'm just going to press her on everything and just see if I need to object at any point. Hold it! Just after midnight, you say? In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. Huh? Yeah, well, yes. Objection. I know you want to find contradictions, but really? Hmm. I hope your next contradiction is a little more relevant to the trial. Witness, continue your testimony. I was in my car. Hold it! Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Gotta keep pushing. Miss Hart? Could you be more specific about your research? As you call it. What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of question. Objection sustained. What? The judge is supposed to say that. <laughs> Wait now, I'm the one who says that. Well then say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. I heard this bang come up from the lake. Hold it. So you weren't looking at the lake at that time? Nope. I looked after I heard that noise. She said that already. I asked you to find contradictions, not leisurely chat with the witness. Irk. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Hmm. So there would have been two photos, right? There should have been two photos. Maybe I can inject with that. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. 
Hold it. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture. Clear, clear enough for you? Uh oh. Wait a second. I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Oh yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Then there was another bang. Hold it. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright. Not meaningless babble. Oh, karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep me from talking to the witness. To what end? What is he planning behind that... 18th century getup he's got on? And I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure that it was named in War and Peace. Like, I'm pretty sure in War and Peace it got named. The, that article of clothing, like, what's it called? What are those called? Neckties? I just want to know the name of them. Get images. Am I really gonna have to look at the complete history of neckties to figure out what this dang thing is called? Were they really just called neckties? Back then. Gators. No, they're not. Bolo. Is that it? No, no, it's not. George Washington had one, right? Yeah, George Washington had one. Cravat. Yeah, they're called cravats. Right? Yeah, they're called cravats. Straight out of George Washington's days. <laughs> Predecessor to the necktie. You know the dude's intense when he's rocking one of those. Edgeworth has one too. You must remind them of the olden days. There wasn't there anything on like but that moment. Are you sure about that? Yeah, sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scan the whole lake? It almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you... 
Mr. Wright. The witness has answered the question in full. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Uh, that's what I'm... Sustained. Yes, of course. Oh, great. Enough. I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. Seems you were unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But, Your Honor... You keep your promise, Mr. Wright. I'm afraid that I will have to penalize any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood? Uh, uh-huh. Nick. A lot of his testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. Yeah, great, Maya. You're not helpful at all. If you could summon Mia, she might be able to help us out against this god-tier lawyer. I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Hold it. Who was that? It was me. Oh wow, was you actually able to summon her, finally? Maya, is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? <laughs> no, I do not. A lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lada. Did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outbursts. Answer me, Lada. What's the big deal? Treat me like some kind of criminal. I saw him, I swear. I saw Edgeworth. Objection. Enough. Judge, declare the defense in contempt of court. Yes, yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He's in contempt of court. But, that wasn't even Phoenix Wright, though. He's in contempt of court and must leave. No. No. Why doesn't Phoenix just say, like, that, that, that wasn't me? Why are you throwing me out of court? Wait, I was the one who made the outburst, Ryan. Nick is innocent. Ha. Huh. What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? You're wrong, Karma. 100%. <clears throat> wrong. What? Did you hear what Mr. Hart, Ms. Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. A glaring contradiction. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony, and I have a right to cross-examine her again. She's changing your story. It's a feeding frenzy. Order. 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 You're in contempt of court. It's too late for wild claims. Judge. Sustain my objection. Is the judge going to tell him no now? I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he's in contempt of court. No, I am. If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me. Yeah, go ahead, arrest her. <laughs> Very well. My effect. You will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick. I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Maya. No, we still need Mia. <laughs> I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. I'm running out of time. 
I better find a contradiction in here or else we might have to keep hearing from this guy straight out of 1700. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, the last state, that last statement. I saw it clear as day. The man on the boat was Mr. Edgar. Hold it. Well, what about the other man? You cannot expect to be allowed to blindly ignore your promise, Mr. Wright. I believe you claim there was a contradiction in the witness's testimony. Well, find it, if you can. Mr. Wright, I have to assign you a penalty. Oh, wow, just for the pressing here? That's it? Oh, I don't know if I can find anything in that. But I can't squander my efforts either. So I, I have to object. And I believe I object with the photo itself. Because there's no way you can see. She said she saw it, though. I saw it clear as day. The man on the boat was Mr. Edgar. So I'm not convinced that this photograph is correct to object with. <clears throat> so he was... He was shot with a single bullet to the heart. But she heard two shots, so maybe I should object with the autopsy report then. Because she heard e yeah, either that or the camera. Because the camera is set to go off each time a loud noise is detected. And if there were two shots, there should have been two pictures then. Furthermore, if he only had one shot to the heart, what was the source of the other shot? Let me try to present the autopsy report, and if that doesn't work, I'll go with the camera. Objection! Objection. This evidence... Okay, we're gonna wait. You need to land me. Alright, fine. Maybe the camera, man. Ah, man, this is confusing me. So it's... Maybe I should have objected with the pistol earlier because it's saying the murder weapon 22 caliber is fired three times. I mean, am I going to have to reload this whole episode? Did I miss opportunities that I had to object? Shouldn't I have just been left on the testimony then, if that was the case? Because it's saying the murder weapon was fired three times. And it's... Saying that there's only one bullet shot to the heart. I don't know. Your Honor, what do you think about the witness's statement? Uh, I'm not sure I follow. It clearly or er, contradicts the um I thought. You don't sound very convinced, Mr. Wright. Objection overruled. I don't think that will be any points with the judge. <sighs> Phoenix right, Phoenix right. Why am I in this play? Like, it's not supposed to just advance the story if I have opportunities to object. Like, that's not supposed to happen. Ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. It's the lake photograph. Objection! Got you. Got you, Miss Hart. Finally. What? You got what? Look at this photograph. See, I don't, I don't fully understand this line of reasoning in the game. I don't understand the narrative it's trying to play. Because if someone is saying they saw something and it's not reflected in the photograph, it's possible, it is possible for someone to have sharper vision than the resolution on the picture of a, a camera. Like that, that's fully possible. 
So how, is, how does this objection make sense? Because it's possible the photo captured something differently from when she saw. Like that's fully possible. It happens all the time. Blurry photographs are a great example. It's like the flaw was in the, in the tool, like the phone, the camera, whatever is used to take the photo had the flaw. But anyway, the photo I took, the very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. Oh, wow. So, so, this picture was taken with professional high quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? What? What? Mr. Wright has a point. Objection. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please. Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Miss Hart. Huh. Could you see the defendant that night? Of course. I said I could, and I meant I could. Then please testify as to the circumstances of your sight. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. How Edgeworth was seen. Testimony. You're right. It was a cold night and the fog was thick as grits. Darn tootin'. <laughs> so once I was finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See? No problem. Hmm. You use binoculars? Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one had better be good. I only have two strikes left, by the way. Before I gotta do it all again. You're right, it was cold night. I wonder if they're gonna dock me just for pressing her on anything. If so, that's kinda whack. That's how I gain additional information. And if I don't have the option to press, like, isn't that going to make it harder for me to win the case? You brought your binoculars, huh? How about this photo of Misty Faye? What do you think about that? What do you think about that, huh? Forgot about Misty Faye's photograph. <laughs> when I heard the Noah's animal lake, I looked at my binoculars. That's all I was finished setting up my camera and I got back in the car. Once I finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car and I brought my binoculars with me. I heard the Noah's animal lake. I looked with my binoculars. I could try to press, but. If I get docked, I might lose. So that. So, how could you see Edgeworth? Now just hold your horses for a second. You hasty Yankee times never find a guy where I'm from. Defense attorneys have trouble with that as it is. Nobody loves me, this I know. Nobody. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. So once I was finished setting them up. Okay, yeah, they didn't talk. Since I was finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Hold it. Your camera? Yeah, it's got an automatic. Objection. The issue we're concerned with here is Mrs. Hart seeing Mr. Edgeworth. The camera has nothing to do with this at all. 
Objection sustained. He's not letting her answer any of my questions. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. Oh. Binoculars? Yeah, yeah, binoculars. Yesterday you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars for that? I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Is the camera really relevant to this case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of question. But know this. If you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? I mean, we're gonna have to, right? Go big or go home. This is make it or break it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of question. Wow, maybe I went a little bit overboard. <laughs> Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. The camera is set up to take pictures of me, your shower. Hee haw. Miss Hart, what made you choose that lake to photograph me yours? You know, the fog gets thick on that lake. It's not very suited to stargazing. Yeah, well. You see, uh, I guess I wasn't thinking too straight. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness because of her challenged intellect. Now, wait a minute. Continue your testimony. You were saying how it was you saw Edgeworth. Grr. No unnecessary comments, please. When I heard that noise out of the lake, I looked with my binoculars. Hold it. If there was a heavy fog, how would binoculars change that at all? What do you mean? Even binoculars can't see through fog, right, people? But you say you clearly saw him. Er, I did, yeah. Enough. There is no room for doubt in her testimony. Hmm, she sounded pretty doubtful to me. But I have to find a clear contradiction first. I don't care how many von Karmic objections I get. I'm going to find a hole in this testimony if it's the last thing I do. Holes. You got to go and dig those holes. How's that song, song go again? <laughs> Broken hands and twisted souls. You got to go and dig those holes. I think I have to eject with the camera here. Yeah. Objection. Objection! You are photographing shooting stars. That's a lie. Haha. <laughs> Says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Oof. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. She was there to take pictures of the murder. Well then, what exactly was she photographing? Bada boom, bada bing, Your Honor. Take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? I believe Gordy is what she was trying to find. Did Gordy photograph? Bajam. Take that. Miss Hart. This is what you were trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy? Oh, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart? I, I never heard of the lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see a proof that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. 
I have it. Proof. Hmm, intriguing. Very well, let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. What is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy the Lake Monster? Is it the camera again? It can't be Misty Faye, right? It, it cannot be Misty Faye. Like there's... Is it the camera again? I just gotta know. Is it the camera again? It can't be Misty Faye. There's just no way. There's just no way. I had to present her camera a second time. The proof, Miss Hart, is your own camera. Your camera is set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Again, it's the game's narrative. Like, I have to try to predict what kind of story they're trying to tell. Thus, the photograph here taken when a gun fired on the lake. I have all the pieces of information and sometimes what's challenging me is like putting it all in chronological order. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? Weren't you? That's why you set up your camera to respond to loud noises. Order, order. I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart? You were camping there to try and take a photo of Gert Gordy, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Are all you lawyers that smart? So smart, but while I was down there trying to photograph Gordy, you got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Hey! But as she so succinctly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason, I know it. But what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart, why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine, I'll testify. It won't change nothing, though. Something will change, it has to. And I'm going to spite. Let's Whisper here. Allow his new testimony. Actually, I'm not a university student. A university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. It is 2 30 in the morning. <laughs> Let's track the time. That's when I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight down the lake. Yeah, this episode is kind of dragging out. It's like over an hour long. This episode. There isn't much else to look at, so I watched that boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the men's hands and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at that boat the whole time. Crossed my heart and hoped to fry. Hmm. Well, Mr. Lake, you may cross examine the witness. Objection. The witness's testimony is unchanged from the point. Whether she's a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of your time for another pointless cross examination. Uh, hmm. Objection. Objection! I claim the defense is right to cross examine the witness, Your Honor. 
one comes up to something new. He doesn't want to cross again her because why? Is there a contradiction? Very well. You may begin the cross examination. You seem sure of yourself. You must have something in mind. Huh. That would be a first. Haha, <laughs> very funny. You understand that this is your last chance of cross examination, which way. If there is no problem with your testimony at this time, you will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at that time, Mr. Ray. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. What is your testimony? Might be my headphones too. Yeah. Harder for me to hear. Okay, let's see here. Definitely, definitely, definitely muffled sound. That's true. Okay. I like the yeah, like the testimony. Person, are you? I'm not sure I'm kind of flawed, elite enough to be called a man or anything. I'm an investigative photographer. Perfect. An investigative photographer? Yep. You get your photo and sell it to the press. It's that kind of business. Hey, I was taking pictures at my sister's graduation last year. And guess what? Um, what? There was a UFO. UFO just hanging in the sky. A UFO? You know, an unidentified flower. A UFO. That's when I had sort of a revelation. I knew I should become an investigative photographer. I see. What kind of a shaky basis for a career? What kind of a shaky basis for a career? Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. Wait, is Cory really all that newsworthy? Heck yeah, they even had him up on the TV. I'm not sure that appearing on the local news in the month segment qualifies. Last month's segment was a Bigfoot sighted on Acorn Hill, I believe. Hey, they also had a picture of him in the newspaper, for real. Mr. Rex, this is one fight I do not believe you can win. Let's keep moving, shall we? Yes, Your Honor. That's why I was camping on my head. That's why you put the automatic sensor on your camera. Yeah, I heard it from a university professor. Analyzes every sound it picks up when it gets a mining. It. it snaps a shot. Yep. So how many pictures has it taken so far? The only time the camera triggered was that night. Hmm. But that's all I'll time. I think it's time you told us why you felt you had to hide your true purpose at the lake. Hey, if we got out, what I was up to the lake these one more competitors. Competitors? Yeah, second rate shutterbugs trying to steal my scoop. Ah, uh, is that the only reason you were hiding the truth? Well, actually. Mr. Wright, I won't have you ask me questions with no relevance to this case. Whatever you say, Von Karma, I know you told her to keep quiet. And I'll get to the bottom of it. It's the last thing I do. I heard the bang went great, straight out there. Exactly what sort of sound was it? Well, I never heard one before, so I can't say for sure, but it sounded like a gunshot. It was a lot sharper sound than I would have suspected. Hmm. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched that boat the whole time. There wasn't much else to look at? Yep. I don't know. She heard a bang, and she thought Gordy was out there. I kind of doubt she'd waste any time with the boat. What? Why'd I do that? What are you giving me that look for? Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence. Witness, continue. Hold your hush puppy, Pops. I'm getting there. I saw a flash in one of the men's hands and heard another gunshot. Is there nothing on the lake but the boat at that time? Huh? Wait, so you're thinking maybe he was shot from some other place? Yeah, it's possible. I don't think so, no. 
That's the smooth class. No is on the shore either. Hmm. Better find some sort of contradiction in this testament. I believe it's the photograph. Hmm. Looked right straight out. Oops. Oops. With my door closed, too. It's comes to the territory of being a small place, I guess. This isn't a, uh, a big follow up. Uh, spacious floor plan. Problem solving, I gotta use. Could also present the pistol, right? Pistol was shot three times. So she should have heard three shots. So why? Maybe that's including all three bangs. Just afraid of uh, watching it, the presentation of the pistol. Objection. Objection. This fast. Are you really looking at that book? That's what you're of course I was looking at. Is there anything out there? Any normal person be looking at? I agree. Any normal person would. But you are far from normal. What? I almost step over here and say that. You were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordon. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordon. That's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Ah. Hmm. Continue, Chico. You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for gold. And that's what you were doing. Well? Hmm. Well, now that Cal mentioned it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. Before you might be out there and all. Are you smart? Are you saying that you were not watching the whole thing? Sorry, Ryan. I wasn't good and real. I was just, I thought, you know, I could be a witness to a murder trial and all. Kind of got excited. Not sure, I was watching the boat and something else. This is totally uncalled for. But hey, about the photograph, you got hurt. Hmm. Still, we can't see who is shooting who. Right, right. That's why I took this photo. Goodness, that's enough. You've had a long day. Shut your camera door. Shut my what? What should I say? I took the 
play it on the big side. She doesn't have pretty graphic boots. She really can't touch my foot with shoe. That's why she said she's going to remove the boat. She said she would drink the blood of life, but she doesn't seem to be sweet. She admires that photo. I won't mind Carmel let her show it. I've got a hunch. I bet that Amarch photo shows something bad for Bon Carmel. This is my chance. If I'm wrong, though, you'll be in prison for Edgeworth, or worse. What should I do? Let's make her show it. His heart, I think he spoke of. He enlarged this photograph to you now. Okay, I do. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Because it does not exist. What are you talking about? I was going to tell you not to show it in court in the first place. Kill the photo. The vision is good. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Walker? Better let me know. Miss Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. It still doesn't show anything yet. It still doesn't show anything. We still cannot see who's firing this. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. Big photo add to the photo grid. Take it automatically on 12 and 5 and 12 15. Minutes. Happy now, Mr. Wright. Hmm. There has to be something. If you ask for the enlargement, you got to enlarge it. And little good it has done any of us. That's why I requested she not show it. Hmm. I suppose this means that the cross examination is over, obviously. Now, I want to close the cross examination of Miss Lampart. I imagine she will soon. That was a greater waste of my time. Mr. Von Carmen, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. And I believe it's time for me to declare my verdict. I think the biggest issue is that none of the physical evidence ties Edgeworth to the crime. Well, actually, the major exception is that pistol with his fingerprints on it. Yeah, pistol. Ay, ay, ay. And the photos don't. So there is reason to believe that. Yeah, it's tricky. Wait, <laughs> it's not supposed to go like this. Yeah, again, those fingerprints. There has to be a clue in this photo somewhere. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Object to the enlargement or show other evidence? Why would I object? What purpose would that serve? damning piece of evidence, his fingerprints. I still haven't been able to cast doubt on that. Let's see, object or show other evidence. Your Honor, there is something decidedly strange with this enlargement. What am I not doing? Mr. Wright, you will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Okay, here goes nothing. I'll show the judge what's strange about this photo. Do I 
draw attention to the fact that there is ambiguity in the photograph. Is that what I draw attention to? Reasoning. Let's find. <clears throat> hmm. Here, Your Honor. The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter's strange? Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not even sure. Look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. The hand? That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. With this man's left hand... Does, what, this man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that left hand contradicts. The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding that pistol with his left hand. However, the prints on the murder weapon are pointing to his right hand. Which leads us to believe that maybe those photo those made prints were printed after the fact. There we go. The man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Mr. Edward. Everyone in the courtroom has quieted down. I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Lowe. Yes, Your Honor. You have given us definitive proof today. We now know that it was not Mr. Edwards who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edwards didn't do it, then who shot a victim? Precisely. As we've seen, there were no other people in the room that night. But the defendant who shot the victim. The victim himself. There's only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was not one other than the victim himself. This doesn't entirely make sense, however. Because if Edgeworth didn't fire the gun, and there were only two people, yes, so. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Because there were two people in the lake that night. Edgeworth and Robert Hammond. And we have this photograph. So if Edgeworth is not the person firing the gun, that means it's Robert Hammond. If we look at this photograph, that would imply that Robert Hammond is shooting the gun at someone else. That someone else would have to have been Edgeworth. So that doesn't really make sense, right? Like, how did he shoot himself if he's shooting the gun at someone else? Like, this isn't a philosophical question. Like, this is actually like. I mean, like. It doesn't look like he shot himself at all. So you're saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. You can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm sorry, sir. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. What? Well, the examination of the victim only reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot from the urban angle. Yeah. A meter. That's three feet. There's no way it could have been suicide. Order, order. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, the photo itself contradicts that, because someone is shooting a gun at someone else. 
there, there's not a whole lot you can see in that photograph. What you can see is that it's pointing somewhere else. That's one thing we can see. Drunk Karma, are you sure the accuracy of your data? Of course. I already considered the possibility of suicide this evening. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Sometime on the 24th or 25th, the autopsy report now says shot from approximately one meter away. Hmm. I see. Very well, let me just state my point. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints on the gun revealed that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I'd like to suspend proceedings for this trial for the day. The court orders the defense and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood. Yes, Your Honor. That is all. This court is adjourned. Are you ready? Let me do so. December 26, 115 from the District Court. The defendant will be the one too. Phew, that was a close one. Hey! Don't you have anything to say? No, I have yet to be cleared for this event. Well, yeah, but I mean, what happened out there on, on that lake anyway? If he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about uh, the shooter was about a meter away too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. I was just kidding around. Look, I'm going to go check on my. Oh, right. What? Tell her something. What? Tell. Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Will it kill you to just state how you really feel with the banks, Edgeworth? I requisitioned a transcript of Wall's entire testimony. My is probably the one reason why we're still in this. For the noble sacrifice. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter. So the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard. All his disposition added to the record. And what's also problematic about this is that the deposition says that she heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. What did they mean sounds like gunshots? Point one. Point two. The pistol. The pistol says three shots were fired. So why didn't she hear that first shot? Again, it's like the JFK assassination all over again. Not found the shots. He continued. Stay in contact. Day two investigation is done. That was a doozy. <laughs> wow. Second half on the stream was on fire. That was because my internet was getting frustrated with my noise level, so I gotta be careful about that. In the future, I think it has part to do with these head Phones. They muffle test test. Yeah, see, you all can still hear me when I'm not being that loud, but these headphones muffle the sounds. So, it, like, when I, yeah, even when I'm like presenting the lines. Still sounds like I'm being quiet. So, yeah, I had to apologize to her for that because it's like, yeah, it's 3 a.m. in the morning here now. So, <sighs> anyway, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Phoenix Wright. Don't forget to follow. Thank you for watching. And this is Ben Stoner Show. Signing off. Defender of Justice.